Hi guys, welcome to my channel where we talk about everything from tech to films and all the fun stuff in between. So in this video, let's look at how I managed to maintain the perfect battery health at 100% on my iPhone 11 Pro Max since the time I purchased it, which was in October last year. Before we jump into any conclusions, let me clarify that the iPhone 11 Pro Max is my daily driver and it is my main phone. I do not use any other phone besides this. And yes, the iPhone is the gadget which I use the most in my life, even more than the iPad and I do use it quite extensively. So I'm hoping that this video will be helpful in providing useful tips on how to get the best out of your phone's battery. Just before proceeding guys, please do subscribe to my channel and show your support so I can keep making fun and informative content. Let's look at my iPhone settings first. You know, all of those settings which can have an effect on your battery life. First is screen brightness. If you see, it's always set to about 60 to 65% and that is bright enough in most usage scenarios. Any brighter will feel like it'll hurt my eyes. Then location services. I have set them so they will be enabled while using an app or on some of them, I have the question of ask so it only fires when I allow it to. Background app refresh is also turned off. See, with high speed internet access, I don't see the need to keep this on as opening an app will refresh it within fractions of seconds. So I don't see the point of turning this on. And for email, I've got the setting fetch automatically. So that's the setting that's done. One thing I have to make clear is that I don't use my phone for gaming. Mobile gaming is really not my thing. The most game that I've binged on my iPhone was Temple Run back when it released and maybe a bit of Angry Birds, but that's it. I'm sure that helped, especially not playing resource intensive games like Fortnite and PUBG Mobile. As those games do tend to drain the battery much quicker. The brief time I played these games on my iPad Pro, I've noticed it reducing the battery quite dramatically even more than say recording 4K videos. And then I do not watch full length movies on my iPhone. I use my iPad Pro for that as having access to a bigger screen provides a better experience altogether. Besides these two tasks, I use the iPhone quite extensively for everything else. So let's look at what my typical usage for a day comprises of. The major tasks which I do with my iPhone are checking social media, checking messages, emails, watching YouTube videos, work-related stuff like Slack messaging, and more social media. So yes, looking at my usage history, both social media and YouTube take up a good chunk of my usage time. Then it's followed by phone calls, office stuff like I mentioned, email, Slack, and finally news, which I do it quite a lot nowadays. See, even when working from home, the device for accessing all the above mentioned activities is still my iPhone as it is easy to use and the portability which it offers cannot be matched by any other devices, not even the iPad. So on a typical day, I end up with about 50 to 60% battery. And that seriously is due to the excellent battery of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. This used to be about 30% of my iPhone 10, but the battery on the 11 Pro Max is simply amazing. Honestly, I hope Apple doesn't ruin this in the 12 series as they simply perfected battery management and its size with the iPhone 11 series. Let's hope that they keep all of it and maybe improve it further due to that five nanometer A14 chipset on the iPhone 12 series. So 50 to 60% on a typical day's usage and about 20 to 30% on a heavy day's usage. My heavy day's usage consists of a lot of 4K video recording at 30 frames per second. See, for a 10 minute YouTube video, I usually shoot over 40 to 50 minutes of footage. I really need to show my face and talk in front of the camera as this will immensely help and also make creating videos quicker than what it currently takes. Maybe sometime soon in future, guys. 
I will step in front of the camera. But for that to happen, please show your support by subscribing to this channel, guys. Now, the iPhone 11 Pro series did come with something extra in the box. The 18 watt USB Type-C fast charger. And guys, this is the main thing that allowed me to keep my battery in tip top condition. I cannot stress how important this has been to the iPhone and would recommend everyone, including non-pro users, to spend the extra 50 pounds and get this as your phone's battery will thank you for this. All it takes is to plug in the iPhone for about an hour and that gets the iPhone battery back up to high 90%. Sometimes when I plug in at 20%, it doesn't get me all the way up to the high 90s, but somewhere even in the low 90s is still good enough. So an amazing option here, guys, do get the fast charger if it doesn't come included with your iPhone. And even when you decide to sell your iPhone for a newer model, perfect battery health will increase the chances of getting more for your device. The next important thing which helped me a lot comes from Amazon. See, plugging in our phones before going to bed is the best way that we all follow to ensure that it would be good and fully charged by the time we get up ready for the next day. And it is so convenient as it is the only true time that we don't have our phones on us. But despite what others say or how clever battery charging has gotten, where it only uses the necessary amount, even if it's plugged in for the whole night, I always found out that this has adverse effect on your phone. Shocking results were on my iPhone 5S. The phone was in perfect condition, not even a single scratch or a mark. The battery was holding up better after three years of usage. I mean, we couldn't actually tell because the battery health wasn't available at that, but the battery wasn't depleting and it was holding charge for the entire day. So. All chuffed with myself, I took the phone to our local CEX store to sell it as I upgraded to a newer model. They graded my device F, which basically means that they will chuck it in the recycle bin for free. I was shocked at the outcome and the reason behind it was screen burn issue. You don't really notice this on your phone, but when you are on that hollow welcome screen, as soon as you set up your iPhone or reboot it, that clearly shows I mean, you can see it in this picture here. You can see the faint screen burn along the edges. The store employee told me that that will happen due to leaving your phone plugged in for whole nights over and over. So even if phones have gotten smarter since, I personally feel that there is no need to plug in your phone for the entire night. Even if it doesn't cause much harm, still optimal charging will sure benefit your phone in the long run. So it's a good habit to cultivate if you wish to see glowing battery health numbers even one year down the lane. And yes, I do understand how difficult it would be to unplug your phone when it reaches full charge, especially when you're fast asleep. And that's where this remarkable Alexa Echo Dot and Amazon Smart Plug come into play. See, when I initially bought these devices, I didn't have much use to the Smart Plug rather than saying, turn on Christmas or let Diwali into your home to turn on the lights during the festive season. But after realizing what it can do for phone charging, I've now assigned the smart plug fully for one purpose, charging my iPhone from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. every morning. It's very simple to program. You can do this via the Alexa app. You have to just go into routines, choose the smart plug and set a routine of turning it on and turning it off during the desired times. And then you can still happily plug in your iPhone before going to bed. Only it doesn't do anything until those scheduled times. So see, you don't have to change your habit of plugging it in during the night before going to bed. You just have to smartify the other end of the cable so it only runs when needed. The Amazon Spark Plug only costs about 24 pounds, but Amazon usually bundles this up with the Alexa Echo Dot alongside for about 35 pounds. So keep an eye for those deals, guys. You can get plenty of third party smart plugs as well, but make sure that you use a reputed brand. And that's not all the charging that I do on my iPhone. At times when I use it more like say a day filled with 4K video recording and FaceTime video calls, I charge it up as needed. 
but mind you i always use the fast charger and never charge it for more than 1 hour again so just an hours worth of charging will get me back to the 80s or 90 percentage i do have access to other chargers in various rooms in my home including direct wall usb sockets which gives more charging output but let's not get tempted by that and use the way iphone charging was intended to be also off let have been seeing lower battery percentages by the end of the day with the same kind of usage as before but that's mainly due to ios 14 and its active widgets on the home screen however with any new software update it takes its toll and i have actually been seeing stable results since ios 14.0.1 was released a few days ago also if you have that covid tracking app in your country enabled then that is also using up a bit of battery percentage so there you go guys hope this video answers your questions related to charging and maintaining better battery life on your iPhones and if you find it helpful a like to this video and a sub to my channel would be amazing also do let me know in the comment section down below about your battery health percentage same as last time but this time also mention your most intensive usage activity on your phone So that would be a good reference for others to compare. So that's all for my video guys. If you stayed until the end, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.